So here is Wi-Fi Jammer Mark II and it's a lot more powerful than the first one because uh, this time I've included a 4 watt amplifier into it. So uh, a lot of the information um, included in this video to do with the AV transmitters I haven't uh, included so much because uh, all that information is in the first video so if you haven't seen the first video I'll put a link in the description so uh, you can check that out so what I've covered here is uh, how I connected up the switches here to uh, choose which uh, AV transmitter to turn on to block just a particular piece of the spectrum and also how I wired the batteries up in serial and parallel in order to power the actual amplifier which uh, works at 6 volts and then I had to put a voltage regulator inside to bring some of that power down to power the AV transmitters that run at 3.5 volts to 5 volts. So as I've said the uh, new jammer is going to be based off this amplifier here. Now a couple of problems with doing this is this actually works on 5 volts between 8 and 5 volts quite fine. These work on 3.3 volts up to 5 volts and no more. But I want to power this project using these Nokia phone batteries. Now you can still buy these new online and they're excellent for powering your little projects, especially uh, Arduino projects, little robots etc. And these work on 3.7 volts which on its own will be fine for this but not enough power for the amplifier. So what I'm going to actually end up doing, I'm going to use a combination of four of these batteries and I'm going to wire them up in serial and in parallel because what I want to do, I want to double the voltage and also increase the milliamp hours because like I said this will drain through batteries pretty quickly. So like I said I'm building it round this piece of tubing here as a case. now. The batteries will fit on top of each other and they will fit in quite easily like so. Also the amplifier will fit in like so. So what I'm going to actually do is construct the batteries first and then use the batteries as the base and then mount the amplifier on top of that and then I'm going to use four of these again like I did in the first build and probably mount them somewhere around here so we've got one um, unit now in that shape and it should all fit in this tube quite nicely. So I've gone ahead and I've got the four batteries that I'm going to use and I've just taken two and double sided sticky tape them together like so so we can fit them together like this inside the tube and we can build on top of this it will give us a nice base when we finish off and we connect these all four together now these two packs are connected in series and so are these two so what I've effectively done I've doubled the voltage on each so now they're actually kicking out just over 7 volts instead of 3.7 volts so what I'm going to do now is finally connect them all together in parallel so we keep that uh, 7 volts but uh, we actually double the capacity so we should get uh, a little bit more operating time out of uh, these batteries in this configuration. So I just wanted to quickly go over the AV transmitter again that I'm using. I'm using the same ones like I've said that I used in the first jammer and they're really quite simple you've got your ground wire and your positive coming in here these two connections here I'm not using there if you want to attach a small camera to here on this side you've got your jumpers where you can solder a jumper on to select which channel you want to broadcast on now when there's no actual jumper in place it broadcasts on channels 1 to 3 and again if you want to broadcast on four to five say you put a jumper in here and here and so on and so on also we'll be removing this antenna here which is just a single piece of wire and we'll be desoldering that and soldering on some LMR cable so this is our driven element here 
and we can solder onto one of these pads here for our ground plane. So just a quick look at the actual amplifier and what I've done to modify this so it fits in the housing. I've removed the little power adapter plug from here and I've directly soldered in the power wires here so uh, it takes up a lot less space. These two cables here are the, for the antennas in and out and I will be desoldering these off here and soldering some fresh wire on to connect up to all the little AV uh, adapters. Also I was originally going to use um, a heat sink on the bottom here but uh, there's not a lot of space in the housing I want to put it in so I've ended up putting this piece of copper on the bottom and it's just held in place with a little bit of thermal paste and on the top here this is the chip that gets really hot I've cut a little heat sink here I've cut it down to size and I'm going to mount it with a little bit of paste directly on top of the chip like so and the paste will be enough to hold it in place there especially when it's been warmed up a few times so uh, that's how I've got around the heat problem and hopefully that will be enough to keep it cool while it's in operating mode. So to house the antennas I'm going to actually use three antennas in this jammer I've got this and it's a lid off the top of a fabric softener bottle and the good thing about this is is it fits rather neatly into the tube that I'm using for the housing so I'm going to mount all three antennas in here and hopefully I'll be able to mount this in a little ways like so fix it like that and this bottom antenna the third antenna is going to come down across the top and then in through the bottom like that and doing it this way hopefully if my plan works I can just slide it in and out of this housing if I need to do any maintenance on it like change any batteries or something stops working so it should end up being a nice little uh, build and construction so to actually control the jammer I've got uh, four switches here and I've actually glued all four together and I've got four LEDs connected in line with the positive and daisy chained the ground together so I've got one lead coming off here for the ground so when I switch one of the channels on for instance the uh, opposing LED will light up to show that uh, that particular circuit is on and to mount these switches what I'm going to do I'm just going to cut out a rectangle here at the base of the tube which is going to be the case for the jammer and uh, put them in like that and just draw, drill out the four holes for each of the LEDs and just above the red LEDs I'm going to drill a hole out to uh, fit this green LED which is actually the power on power on for the unit and uh, the power on for the amplifier so I've got the switches and the LEDs mounted into this part of the case in here so I just wanted to show you a quick overview of where I am at the moment now because here I've actually got four phone batteries and it's a combination of series and parallel and it gives me an output of 7.5 volts now I needed the extra volts to actually power for the amplifier the amplifier needs 6 volts and above to uh, power that but uh, the little AV transmitters only need 3.5 to 5 volts maximum to power those so what I've done I've actually put a voltage regulator in the base here to uh, bring that power down to 5 volts just to power the AV transmitters and I got that uh, voltage regulator out of one of these um, cheap car USB converters takes 12 volts from the car battery and converts it down to 5 volts and um, I picked a few of these up from the uh, pound shop so if you ever see any of these in your local pound shop then uh, pick them up because uh, you get to, what you get inside is a voltage regulator and it's a very cheap way of um, adding a voltage regulator to your projects so I've also been busy extending the wires out of here and as you can see I've also started to label these because 
we're getting uh, quite a few wires now and it's easy to get uh, confused where where these wires go so it's a good idea in your project when you get something this busy with wires then uh, label them so you know where you are and this one here because I actually started this project some months ago and then I uh, stopped halfway through and put it on the shelf I've actually forgotten where all these wires go to because I've put these uh, AV transmitters in here and I've preset them to the different channels like I've shown you uh, previously by jumping them and I've actually forgotten now which channels they're actually set on so I've got to go through and test these and then uh, label them up appropriately so uh, I can connect them onto here so I've connected all the wires up now and um, I've given it a little test to make sure that uh, each channel works when you uh, press the appropriate switch here and also on the end here I've just uh, cut out a round piece of black perspex and just epoxied it to the end so now you've got your charging port there and you've got your four selector switches on the top here to choose the different channels the green button is actually the power on and the amplifier on and then you've got your master on off switch here on the side so I've purposely left the wires quite long so I'm able to split it if anything gets, goes wrong and I need to get in there to fix anything but um, I've got to uh, organize these cables a little bit better because they're gonna actually fold back on themselves and I don't want any cables uh, particularly resting on top of this heatsink because it does get quite hot so here is the finished jammer in its enclosure I'm quite happy with it although it does look a little bit like Darth Vader's lightsaber so we've got the spectrum analyzer running here so what I'm going to do is turn on the jammer and we'll probably start to get a little bit of interference across the bottom here just from the um, actual amplifier that's inside because the power on automatically turns on the amplifier so now we've got our four selector switches here so turn on channel 1 which will jam the first three channels on the 24 gigahertz spectrum so turn that off, turn off on the second channel see the second channel there turn that off, turn on the third channel we can switch that off and finally the fourth channel so it gives you a lot more control over the jamming of the 24 gigahertz spectrum so you can now select the different channels if you want to keep your channel free and jam somebody else's channel and of course you can flick on all four selector switches and totally jam the spectrum like the original one could so I hope you enjoyed that if you did please give it a big thumbs up and uh, I'll catch you next time